Hi, everyone. Welcome to Bitcoin Big Ideas 2023. My name is Yasin Almandra. I'm Arch's crypto lead, and I have the pleasure of being joined by David Puel, Arch's crypto research associate. And today we're super excited to dive into the Bitcoin section of this year's Big Ideas. Now, considering all the contagion and volatility we experienced in 2022, now feels like the perfect time to take a step back put the year in perspective and dive into some of Bitcoin's fundamentals that are often overlooked, especially deep in a bear market. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. Starting with the uh, a look into how severe uh, Bitcoin's drawdown was in this cycle compared to previous drawdowns. Uh, now, in November 2022, Bitcoin appears to have found a bottom of around 15,800, which makes it the fifth largest and second longest price drawdown in history. I think this is really a helpful perspective to understand that really every market cycle that Bitcoin has gone through, it suffered a, a really severe collapse after a media, meteoric rise. And, and this cycle was no different, uh, drawing down from uh, about 77% from its all-time high. Now, relative to previous all-time highs on a percentage basis, Bitcoin really experienced the, the mildest correction it ever has in a bear market. Uh, the 2018 bear market, for instance, saw an 84% drawdown from its 2017 top. Uh, and in the 2013 to 2015 bear market, saw an 87.7% drawdown. Uh, now, when you look at the price action from peak to peak and trough to trough, what has been encouraging to see is Bitcoin has not broken any trend despite experiencing uh, some of the most damaging events we saw uh, this year. Both its peak-to-peak -peak and trough-to-trough -trough, uh, compound annual rate of returns stand at approximately 150%. Uh, and as of this recording, Bitcoin is up from about 45% from the bottom. Uh, so especially in an asset class that's extremely volatile, it's, it's really helpful to gain some perspective on uh, what Bitcoin's price action looks like from you know, one bottom of a bear market to another and one top of a bull market to another. Relative to traditional asset classes, Bitcoin continues to outperform on three, four, and five-year time horizons, even in the face of experiencing you know, five-plus drawdowns of greater than 75%. Uh, I think it's really interesting, as you can note from this table, that Bitcoin has outperformed uh, traditional asset classes, including global equities, global debt, and gold on every time frame, uh, as denoted in, in the table, uh, which is really a testament to the importance of maintaining uh, a, a long-term focus. Relative to previous drawdowns and similar price points, Bitcoin's fundamentals are also getting a lot stronger. And I, I really liked uh, doing this exercise for for. For this Bitcoin big idea is because often the question is, okay, we've seen this relative drawdown, we've seen Bitcoin as bottom, but how are the fundamentals looking relative to previous market cycles? Now, Bitcoin bottomed again at 15,800 in 2022, which was a drop of 77% from its all-time high. And as you can see from this table, its fundamentals were stronger at that time than they had been in prior instances when it was at the same value, 15,800 or similarly down by 77%. We can run through a simple example just with the market cost basis. So the first time Bitcoin hit 15,800, it was an all-time high in late 2017. Its market cost basis was only at $58 billion. Uh, then when Bitcoin drew down 77% from its all-time high in November 2018, its market cost basis was $85 billion. And then again, when it hit uh, $15,800 in uh, the 2021 bull market, its market cost basis was $126 billion. Finally, the market cost basis when it bottomed at that $15,800 down 77% from its November 2020, in November 2022, the market cost basis basically exceeded all of those points and stood at around $393 billion. This same pattern applies to other metrics like hash rate, long-term holder supply, and lightning network capacity. So in terms of capitulation, meaning uh, when does Hitcoin may hit a, a seller exhaustion, uh, we, we found several metrics, uh, two of which we see here, which denote that historically Bitcoin has found seller exhaustion on a, uh, on a long-term basis. Um, first off, the percentage of Bitcoin trading at a loss uh, reached uh, an all-time high uh, during uh, 
Q, Q4 of 2022 uh, uh, in the in the duration of the FTX collapse. Um, and at, at the same moment, the cumulative uh, realized losses for 2022 uh, in USD denomination also hit a, an all-time high. Now, uh, looking at uh, uh, holder behavior in the Bitcoin network, we found that the cohort denominated as long-term holders, which is holders uh, holding coins that haven't moved in the last 155 days are uh, still steady. Uh, the 155 day threshold is very important given that the probability of a Bitcoin uh, being spent into the future uh, drops dramatically into less than uh, three or 4%. So we found that um, after this major threshold, uh, the coins in the Bitcoin network develop a Lindy effect of dormancy. Uh, that's why this metric is uh, very important uh, over a long time horizon. Now we've seen that during most of the year in 2022, slowly and steadily, uh, the long-term holder supply um, kept making new highs as the bear market kept progressing, indicating that um, you know people holding Bitcoin for between five and six months we're going into longer time horizons, year, two years, etc. Um, also, we, we notice uh, major outflows from centralized exchanges, especially given um, the, the, several, the, the various collapses uh, during 2022, the, the trust in centralized entities uh, drop substantially, and that's denoted by uh, the amount of outflows uh, of coins. Uh, leaving those centralized exchanges over time, especially um, during and in the aftermath of FTX. At the same time, we notice um, the um, the start of of a very important trend, um, giving transparency to to the crypto ecosystem, which is um, the concept of proof of reserves, which although several entities had already provided, but it's considered a cryptographic. Um, proof with different degrees of um, um, cryptographic accuracy and security, um, the, the number of entities um, providing their proof of reserves increase during the aftermath of the FTX collapse um, into 2023 as well. So with, with peak capitulation, uh, with long-term holders at an all-time high, uh, we also saw that miners really did not slow down in, in 2022. Uh, as you can see from this chart, Bitcoin's average annual hash rate, which is a proxy for network security, has now increased 12 consecutive years. Uh, whereas price was down 64.2% in 2022, hash rate was up 55%. Again, a testament to the fundamentals uh, continuing to show resilience uh, independent of price action. Uh, Bitcoin mining, which really started off as a hobbyist activity, has really now evolved into a full-fledged industry and incentivizes new and more efficient forms of energy generation by offering this bounty, i.e. Bitcoin, to anywhere, anyone, at any time. Whereas in the past, electricity generation was only economically viable in locales that were relatively close to the site of consumption, Bitcoin mining allows us to develop power generation infrastructure in, in remote energy rich locations. And this is a boon for alternative energy sources, which have faced scaling and commercialization problems. Now they can leverage Bitcoin mining and play the arbitrage between electricity prices and, and Bitcoin prices. In particular, the natural gas industry uh, can significantly benefit from the promise of Bitcoin mining. Uh, we, we can see installing natural gas generators at well sites and then using methane that otherwise would be vented to mine Bitcoin uh, could not only generate electricity at, at, at a much lower cost for, for relative traditional Bitcoin miners, but could also make the difference between high and low returns on investment in oil and gas fields. Um, there's also talk often about Bitcoin's uh, energy consumption uh, being uh, non-ESG uh, friendly. Uh, this provides a, a clear use case as to how Bitcoin can actually help curb some of the, the, the these emissions uh, by by rechanneling the the flare into into actual Bitcoin mining.
2022 was really, uh, I'd say, a change, especially in this bear market from what we've seen in previous bear markets. The, the, the trend is usually one where in a bull market, every institution, every media can, has nothing wrong to say about Bitcoin and, and crypto as an asset class. Uh, but then comes a massive deleveraging cycle uh, like what we saw in 2018, uh, where there was a massive collapse after following the ICO craze. And all of the institutions take a step back and say, you know, this is no longer an asset class that we're interested in. There's clearly a lot of maturity that's required. Uh, there's a change in tone from a lot of major institutions, even in the face of a centralized counterparty mismanagement and the contagion that we saw. Uh, I, I, I think we've been quite pleasantly surprised at how institutions remain committed to uh, Bitcoin in particular during this bear market. Uh, we saw really interesting partnerships uh, between uh, BlackRock's Aladdin and Coinbase Prime to provide institutional clients with direct access to crypto, starting with Bitcoin. Uh, that was really announced uh, prior to the FTX collapse. And, uh, you know, in, in the mo most recent uh, news cycle and, and, and events, we've seen that both BlackRock and Coinbase remain committed to this partnership. Uh, BNY Mellon also launched a crypto asset custody platform uh, for institutional investors. And uh, we know just how big BNY's Mellon's uh, footprint is in, in the investable asset world. Uh, Eagle Brook Advisors, uh, along with a partnership with ARK, uh, now is offering financial advisors direct access to uh, crypto SMAs. Um, and this includes kind of direct crypto asset exposure, uh, and and uh, get, provides a, a great opportunity for for RIAs and wealth managers to gain exposure uh, to crypto in in a way that they're uh, familiar with uh, in, in other asset classes. And then finally, Fidelity um, ha has been a longtime friend of Bitcoin, has been committed to the space uh, really since the early days. Uh, has officially launched their retail Bitcoin and Ether trading platform. And, and again, all of this in, in really the depths of, of a bear market. I think is a testament to some of the the long term conviction that these players um, ha have shown. Now, as the best performing asset in the last ten years, a lot of investors uh, do believe that they've missed the Bitcoin boat, uh, or uh, other investors see this massive drawdown and say, you know, that, that that they're not yet ready to commit long term to an asset class that shows such volatility. I think in the first slide, as we saw. Um, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of upside um, to a highly volatile asset, uh, and despite some of the wild price swings over longer term time horizons, uh, Bitcoin and, and, and crypto we believe uh, will continue to significantly outperform asset classes. Uh, we we believe Bitcoin's uh, or crypto's market capitalization, which we highlighted in in the overview section. Uh, could increase by more than 25 fold to 25 trillion dollars of market value by 2030 with bitcoin taking a, a majority of the share and if it were to it would still only represent a fraction of equities global money supply bonds real estate uh, a 25 fold increase from today's prices would translate to roughly a six hundred eighty thousand uh, dollar bitcoin price we further dimension this opportunity highlighting eight use cases, each contributing to Bitcoin's potential appreciation. The largest use case still remains Bitcoin as this digital store of value competing with gold, but it extends to other use cases like acting as a as a, an institutional investment and portfolio diversifier, uh, as a global economic settlement network, as a seizure resistant asset, as a potential emerging market currency. Uh, it's important to also note here that, you know, given the contagion, we, we have slightly adjusted uh, this model uh, as compared to last year's model to account for uh, a, a reputational setback that the industry may have seen in light of uh, the collapses from you know centralized counterparties, including FTX and Genesis and Three Arrows Capital. Uh, and, and so in this year's presentation, we've also added uh, a bear, a base and a bull price targets as opposed to that single price target given in, in the uh, last year's big ideas report. Uh, and so you can see, it, you know, in our in our bull case, we still remain, uh, you know, pretty confident that Bitcoin you know, could still reach uh, a 1.4 uh, 
uh, $1.5 million price uh, by 2030. Now, despite the rough year, as, as you know, hopefully we've, we've highlighted, Bitcoin really hasn't skipped a beat. I think the, the future looks bright if you look at the fundamentals. And we really look forward to seeing what's in store for 2023. Uh, if you'd like to learn more or download the full uh, Big Ideas report, you can check out our website, www.arc-invest.com, uh, and get more information there. Thank you very much.